She has the perfect body type. Bill and Cheney loves the pinhead. Look at those long legs. She's musical. Did you see her turnout? She has rhythm. Did you see those arches? She's too tall for a career in ballet. Better to marry a rich man. What about fashion design? Face it, kid. You don't stand a chance. My advice? Cut your losses. You just don't have what it takes. It's obvious. What makes you think you can make it? Didn't think so. Not good enough, Stephanie! Try harder! It's 1962, and I'm 12 years old now. My family moved to the Upper West Side of Manhattan at 325 Weston Avenue. Back then, it was very dangerous. A half a block away was this welfare hotel with pimps and prostitutes and drug addicts. I had to navigate these neighborhoods in order to get to my junior high school, William J. O'Shea, Junior High School 44, which happened to have been the worst school in Manhattan. And you could easily find yourself shoved up against the lockers for the slightest infraction. What are you looking at? I'm gonna beat your ass. You meet me after school at three in the yard and I'll beat you up good. It was there that my gym teacher, Mrs. Roberts, suggested I join her after school ballet program. Stephanie, I can see you. Come on in. I instantly fell in love with ballet when I saw Erica dance. Where did you learn how to do that? School of American Ballet. I ran home and I had to tell my mom, I have to go to the school. School of American Ballet. I've got to go there. My mother made it happen. She called up the School of American Ballet and she got me an audition. Founded in 1934 by George Balanchine and Lincoln Kirstein, the School of American Ballet was created with one purpose only to develop dancers who are as well trained as surgeons okay. and to return to the school to That's train better. the next generation yeah, of dancers. And fifth, go low and one, good. And SAB has two functions, but it also one, trains dancers one, for companies all over the world. I was accepted. Little did I know that I got into the best ballet school 
in all the world. The feeder school of George Balanchine's New York City Ballet. And not only that, the school was over Shreya's Candy, which had the best fudge in all of New York. If you don't feel challenged, it's because you're not doing enough. Ballet should never feel comfortable. Comfortable is lazy. If you're comfortable when you dance, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. 100% is not enough. You have to give 200%. One tendu takes years of hard work and will never be perfect. Everything in ballet is a challenge. Keep your legs moving. The students that we have at the school, especially in the Adva intermediate to advanced classes, I think they've made that commit the commitment that they want to be a dancer. The students at this school don't need to be pushed. They live to dance and sometimes they are their own harshest critics. I saw him downstairs. Shh! I think I hear him coming. Oh God! It's him! Ladies! Ladies! To the bar! And quickly! Does he like me? Oh God, he's standing right behind me. He's looking at me. Why is he leaving? He's never gonna choose me. I'll never make it. I'm not dancing good enough. My passe's not high enough. My devil pay's not high enough. My frappes aren't fast enough. I'm not good enough. George Balanchine nodded at me. I was in heaven. But not for long. My mother, Charlotte, was raised by Russian immigrants during the Great Depression. As a child, she was considered a piano prodigy, performing throughout Europe. I grew up with the soundtrack of Chopin, Beethoven, Schubert, Liszt. Whenever she would touch the keys, I could hear her soul. But why didn't she follow her dreams?
Why did she pursue real estate? She always wanted to be rich, but instead married for love. She was a force of nature not to be messed with. a yeller, a screamer, and a passionate woman. A successful woman who always got what she wanted, except for her dreams which made me perpetually determined to achieve mine. Stephanie, I cannot pay for your ballet school anymore. It's either design school or marry a rich man. Personally, I think marrying a rich man is the far better option. What am I to do? Director Adams, Stephanie Herman here to see you. Miss Adams, you know how much I love ballet. My parents can't pay for lessons anymore. What am I to do? Don't worry, we'll give you a scholarship. And from there, I got accepted to the High School Performing Arts. The next four years were heaven. The Selva Award goes to graduating senior Stephanie Herman. My mother was now accepting my dreams. All I had to do now was get hired by a good ballet company. Piece of cake, right? Sorry, number 10, you're too tall. Number eight, we can't take you. We just don't have a male dancer tall enough for you. Thank you. Excellent work, number three, but we can't work with anyone your height. You over there, thank you, but no. Maybe my mother is right. I'll never make it. I'm not good enough. Thank you, everyone. That's it for today. Auditions are closed until next year.
about her? No, we have our quota. But she's such a lovely dancer. You, there in the back, without the number. Yet we will take you. That was me dancing my very first solo, Dark Angel, from George Balanchine's Serenade Ballet. Music must be seen, and dance must be heard. Switzerland was an amazing time. This boutique company with dancers from all over the world. It was like a dream come true working directly with George Balanchine, the master, the choreographer, the musical genius, another dream come true. At 23, I was on top of the world, touring Europe, learning French, and eating Swiss bonbons. Voulez-vous un peu de chocolat, mademoiselle? Bien sûr, d'accord, merci beaucoup. Soon it all came crashing down. Stephanie, you have four discs protruding, T2 and T3 plus L4 and S1. You should expect to have chronic back pain, and your left knee has a torn medial meniscus. At this point in your life, you should give up dance and become an accountant. The biggest question, what now? Could I heal? I was back home again, but broken. Stephanie, I don't think you're going to get better. You should go to design school now. Even if I was broken and injured, I was still a dancer. I moved back into my childhood home and soon lost a sense of independence. As much as my mom wanted me to be practical, 
and give up dance, she was also determined to help me heal. She was my biggest ally at this time. She found a trainer that had helped other injured New York City ballet dancers, Corolla Trier, the first disciple of Joseph Pilates. She was in her 70s and as tough as nails, another woman not to be messed with. She had big hair pulled into this perfect dyed black French knot. She was short. I was tall. She would push me, slap me, and I would be her puppet and just mold into what she wanted from me. I trusted her. It was great. I was able to move technically in challenging ways that were only making me stronger than I was before my injury. This was the birth of my long relationship with the Pilates method. Now that I was stronger than before and not knowing if I would make it again in ballet, I decided to work with Alvin Ailey in the humid New York summer heat of 1974. Love like a river, will not love like a river, will not love like a river, in
face it, kid, you don't stand a chance. My advice? Cut your losses. You just don't have what it takes. It's obvious. What makes you think you can make it? Didn't think so. Better to marry a rich man. She's too tall for a career in ballet. What about fashion design? Bonjour, Stephanie. Le Grand Théâtre de Genève wants you back. Congratulations. In a short time, I progressed from soloist to principal ballerina. I was on top of the world again, dancing more and once again touring the world, performing with such luminaries as Rudolf Nureyev, Mikhail Baryshnikov, and dancing the roles of my childhood inspiration, Suzanne Farrell. Apollo, Symphony in C, Second Movement, Tatiana, Midsummer's Night Dream. I was dancing my dream. So there I was at the bar, doing my ballet warm-up before Ruby's ballet, George Balanchine Ballet. I was picked to do the lead. And guess who was chosen to dance with me? <laughs> When he walked into the studio, the energy was electric. Oh my God. He's standing behind me. I better do everything correctly, not make any mistakes. Then I hear, psst, I don't understand the step. For Tandu's friend, Four side, four back, passe, fifth, susu, sudne. Thank you. He is so close to me. <laughs> so I hear, psst, again. I turn around. Then I hear, psst, again. I turn around, and I hear, psst. And I whip around, and I say, will you pay attention? And the twinkle in his eyes, and the smile on his face, <sighs> the ice was breaking. The ice was melting. We had a moment that would last for a long time. But I'll tell you about that another time. Anyway, back at the bar, and Rudolf Nureyev walks in, and he's going to cast our company for a ballet that he choreographed for the Paris Opera, Manfred, about the story of Lord Byron. There is Rudolf Nureyev, premier dancer of the world. I idolized him when I was a kid. In fact, when I was in, in high school performing arts, 
I played hooky with my friend Marcy to wait on line for three hours just to get standing room tickets to see Rudolf Nureyev and Margot Fontaine dance Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, I got the last standing room tickets and I ran home and there was my mother standing there. I heard you played hooky today. You can't go to the ballet. (gasps) But I have to go, I have to go. Speak to your father. So my father, who happens to be a very fair man, said, what do you think your punishment should be, Stephanie? I said, seven days, no dates, seven days, no phone calls, seven days, no TV. He said, don't worry, you can go, seven days, no dates. And when I saw that night Rudolf Nureyev flying in from the wings, 10 feet above the stage with both his legs up in the air and then landing as soft as a leaf and then doing pirouettes forever and ever and ever and then boom, landing like a dime. And then when Marco Fontaine walks in, chemistry between them, you could feel all the way in the standing room. And here I was, just finding out I was cast to play his mother. (laughs) His mother who haunts him and comforts him, just like in his life when he defected from Russia to England. And in rehearsal, he would say to me, I want you to do a double pirouette on point, land in penche, on point. And my director says, "Uh, that's impossible. (laughs) And he looks at her and he goes, she will do it. I did it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She was like, wow. (laughs) So we kept that in the ballet. And then Rudolf Nureva says to the director, see, I told you. On stage, as a mother, I'm supposed to get so angry at him. I'm like so angry. And he's running to me to forgive me, to have forgiveness. And I hold him with all my might. And he comes to me with all of his heart and soul. And we were both transformed into that moment. I was his mother and he was my son. That was a dream come true. I left Switzerland because the theater was going through a renovation. So after seven years, maybe it was time to come try my luck auditioning in New York again. Bonjour, Swissair. Nous prévoyons un vol sans erreur, durée de 9h et 25 minutes, arrivé à JFK à 22h05. Welcome to Swissair. We are planning a very smooth flight. Our flight will be 9 hours and 27 minutes, arriving in JFK at 10.05 p.m. I wasn't making it in auditions because I was still tall. I wasn't getting any shorter. So there I was in New York at 4 West 90th Street, a very cute one bedroom apartment and $500 rent and I only had enough money for one more month of rent. I wasn't making it anymore as a ballerina, getting jobs, so I had to find a job. I never tried to look for a job outside of being a ballerina. So I got the New York Times, big paper, small print, want ads forever and ever. It was daunting, I didn't know who am I? Who am I? Do I go to for sales? Do I try to get a job for fashion design? Artists? I, it was daunting. So I got the Daily News. Smaller paper, bigger print. 
wanted dancers experience. Yay, called Bernie, 516 area code. <laughs> I call it Bernie. He asked me what my experience is, and I say, ballerina. And he goes, great, we'll audition you at the event on Saturday. You just go to the Waldorf Astoria, look for ballroom number three, and ask for Bernie. $100 a night. Okay. So, Saturday comes around. Waldorf Astoria. Big hotel. Ballroom number seven. Ballroom number ten. Ballroom number five. <gasps> ballroom number three. There's a giant easel. with a board that says David Berg's Bar Mitzvah. I must be in the wrong ballroom. <laughs> Maybe he said two. <laughs> so I asked the guy, I said, do you know where Bernie is? Oh, yes, Bernie's right over there. Hi, Bernie, nice to meet you. Yes, okay, Bernie says, go in the dressing room, go ask Ruth for your list of costumes and you get free dinner. Okay. So I go to the dressing room. Lots of really nice dancers. Okay, it might not be so bad. I get my list. Tennis racket. Okay, so maybe, you know, I do a dance with a tennis racket. I could be creative. Okay. Radio City Music Hall. I could be a rocket. That's what. I can kick my leg up. I could be a rocket. Okay. It's in the trunk. My costumes are in the trunk. Okay. It's not a tennis racket. It's a tennis racket. It's a 10 foot costume of a tennis racket. <laughs> that I have to slip myself into the handle, very skinny, zip it up, and the giant head, <laughs> Velcro it together. Tiny holes, I can hardly see out of this thing. I stick my hands through. Ruth says, Go and dance with the bar mitzvah boy. <laughs> David's four foot nine. <laughs> okay, done with that. Go back to the dressing room. Hardly can see out of the Velcro. <sighs> okay, ready for some musical. I'm not a rocket. I am a building. <laughs> I am Radio City Music Hall. Oh, the tower, the tower on my head. I have to wait. While I sit waiting on the trunk, there's another dancer dressed up as a phone booth over there. <laughs> Saren Anderson. Her mouth is wide open, pointing at me. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I heard you were a prima ballerina. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, the tears, I could not wipe the tears fast enough off of my face. I realized then my ballerina days are over. 
it's time to move on. But it's okay. This music is so beautiful, it just makes me want to dance.